Hi friends, welcome back to our channel. Today's story is Madalasa, a story published in the Chindamama magazine. So let's move towards the story. Once upon a time, there was a king called Satrujit. Prince Dhritudhvaja was his son. The young prince was so cultured, so handsome and so valorous that young men came from far off places for his companionship. Two youths of the serpent world belonging to the Naga tribe took on the disguise of Brahmins and came to the new world prince seeking his companionship. These youths showed such attachment to the prince that he was anxious to have them always by his side. All the day they kept company with the prince and went home only after dark. I never see you during the daytime. The Naga king one day said to his two sons. You are at home only during the night. Why is it so? Oh, father, the boys replied, we have become the friends of Prince Ritudhuja. We keep him company all day. We don't think uh, he has a rival in all the three worlds in either cl in cleverness or beauty or courage. The Naga king was happy at this. He said, well, then why don't you give him some nice gifts? What is that we can give to him, father? The boy said. He lacks nothing. If an occasion should arise when we can do something for him, a good turn, we will certainly help him. The Naga king agreed to this. Now, a certain hermit called Galava was doing penance in a forest where a demon named Pathalaketu belonging to the nether world began to harass him. The poor hermit knew not what to do. He looked up at the sky and heaved a great sigh. The next moment a strange horse came down from the sky and alighted before him and he heard these words from above. Oh Galava, this horse can travel the three worlds. It is a three world horse. Take this to Prince Dhritudhuja and so that he can ride it. Go everywhere and protect you from the demons. Without delay, Galava, the hermit, mounted the three world horse and went to the king Shatrujit. He begged the king to let the prince accompany him. The king agreed and the prince mounted the horse and went to the Galava's hermitage. It was evening. Galava sat down to worship his fire. The demon Patalakitu took in the form of a wild hog and rushed into the fire chamber and frightened Galava. The lords of the hermitage shouted for help. The prince rode to the spot and hit the hog with a veil aimed arrow. The hog began to run away, groaning with pain. The prince chased it for a while and finally saw it jump down a pit. It was no shallow pit. It was the entrance of the passage to the nether world. Luckily, the horse could go anywhere and the prince entered the passage on it. Presently, he emerged near a well-lit city and entered it. At one place, he saw a woman near a house. As for the hog, it had completely disappeared. Who are you, madam? The prince asked the woman. What is your name? What is the name of this place? Instead of replying, the woman moved and went inside the house. Intrigued by her silence, the prince followed behind her. Inside, he saw a fairy-like damsel reclining on a couch. The woman whom the prince saw outside was standing by fanning the damsel. Now, the woman was anxious to speak. O oh, prince, she said, my friend here is the daughter of the fairy king Vishwavasu. Madalasa is her name. Patala Ketu, the demon kidnapped her and brought her here with his devilry. He went away after informing her that he would marry her on the 13th day of the moon. My friend would have committed suicide, but for my intervention, my name is Kundala and I am her companion. I am thinking that Providence has sent you to rescue my friend. Here, Kundala learned from the prince his story. She found that 
Madalasa was favorably disposed to the young gentleman. She took Madalasa's hand, placed it in the hand of the prince as a gesture of betrothal and said, O oh, prince, from now she is your responsibility. The prince put Madalasa on his horse and began to retrace his steps. When there was a shout, Stop! Don't move a step! The demon Padalaketu stood before him with his forces. At once, the prince took out an arrow that produces intense heat and hit the demons instantaneously turned into heaps of ashes. Then the brave prince took Madarasa to his home and married her. Until noon every day, he wandered the three worlds protecting the hermits from the rituals and the rituals. The rest of the day he spent with his loving wife. Because of this horse, the people began to call him the three world rider. Padalaketu died at the hands of the prince, had a younger brother called Talaketu. He bore a grudge against the prince because the prince had killed his brother and married the girl he had intended to marry. He devised a plan to avenge himself on the prince. He disguised himself as a hermit built a hermitage on the banks of the Jumna and pretended to do penance. One day, the prince came to the spot, saluted the false hermit and asked him, Holy man, are you free from the troublesome demons? My son, the other replied, What can the demons do while we have such an one as you to protect us? But he added, I am in need of your help. What can I do for you? The prince asked. I thought of performing yagna underwater. I need some gold. I want you to give me your necklace and stand on the bank. Seeing that no demons come this way, Talaketu said to the prince. The young man believed him and, be and gave him his necklace. While he stood on the bank with his bow and arrows in readiness, the cunning demon swam to the other bank of the river under the water and soon reached the place of Shatrajit. O king, he wailed, I bring you very sad news. The demons have killed your son. At the last moment, the boy handed me his necklace. We ascetics have no use with gold. So I came all the way to tell you the sad news and give you this necklace. Having said this, the demon departed. As soon as she heard of her husband's death, Madalasa fell down with a swoon in which she died. The, this only added to the sorrow of the king and the queen who already filled with grief. In the meantime, the demon Talaketu swam across the river under the water again and came out of it and said the prayer to the prince, Thanks to you, young man, I finished my yagna. You can go now. The prince rode back to his palace the entire city appeared to him to be devoid of life. He noticed that several persons were staring at him wildly. He reached the palace without comprehending anything. His father and mother embraced him, crying, Are you alive, son? But they did not cease to shed tears. What are you weeping for? The prince asked him. They told him how when Madalsa got the news of his death, she died of shock. The grief of the prince was immense. He blamed himself for remaining alive after bearing the news of his wife's death. He would have killed himself, but for the consideration that suicide was sinful, I shall marry another woman in my life, he swore. Among the many friends of the prince, there was none who did not share his sorrow. The Naga youths approached their father, saying, O oh father, now is the time for us to go and help the prince if we can. In his present condition, nothing can please him as much as regaining Madalasa. They told him all that had happened. The Naga king thought for a while, I shall try, he said, whatever lies in my power. At one time, the Naga king had worshipped Saraswati the goddess of learning and, and pleased her. She had bestowed upon him the gift of music. Now he went to Mount Kailash and sang before Lord Shiva. 
Lord Shiva was so pleased with the singing that he had, he said, My son, you made me so happy with your music. What can I do for you in return? Lord, the Naga king said, I want you to bring Madarasa back to life. But she is already cremated, Lord Shiva said. How can she come back to life? Create her again, Lord said the Naga king. I am very eager to make the prince my son-in-law. So be it, said Lord Shiva. Go home and worship your ancestors. Offer them the usual morsels of food. Then eat the middle one of the morsels and Madalsa will be reborn out of your head. Naga king did as he was told and Madalsa came out of his head alive once again. He hid her in his palace. Then he called his sons and said to them, Sons, you have never once brought your prince here and given him hospitality. Now that, is it, now that he is immersed in the grief, is it your duty to entertain to him and make him forget his sorrow? The Naga boys at once went to the prince and said, O oh prince, you have never been our guest. Our father keeps asking for you. Won't you come with us? The prince agreed to be their guest for a while. The three of them came to the banks of the Gomati and got into the waters. The moment the Naga boys were underwater, their bodies changed into those serpents. The prince saw gems shining on their heads. What a surprise! The prince exclaimed. You are not Brahmins, but Nagas. Why did you keep it a secret from me? O oh, prince, the boys said, we were afraid that you would refuse to be friends with us if you knew that we were Nagas. You must pardon our deceit. What do I care if you are Nagas? The prince replied. Whoever you are, you are dear to me. The Naga king gave the prince a really colorful reception. There was no end to the feasts and the entertainments which he got up in honor of his guest. He offered a seat to the prince by his side and on his diamond throne and said, My dear young man, my sons talk about you all the time. I thought that I should have such a charming young man for my son-in-law. I heard that your wife had died an untimely death. You are still young and you should marry again. Accept my daughter as a gift from me. Pardon me, sir, the prince said. I have vowed that none but Madalsa should be my wife ever. Oh, you will change your mind, said the Naga king, smiling. After you have seen my daughter, then he ordered the maids to bring Madalasa. What was the joy of the couple when they saw one another again? The Naga told the Naga king told the prince exactly what had happened and said, "Well, son, she was your wife first, but now she is my daughter too. Permit me to marry you again." The marriage of Madalasa took place amidst great splendor and rejoicing. Naga king heaped gold and diamonds upon the couple when they took leave of him and returned back to their country. So this was the story published in the Chandamama magazine. So till I come back with a new episode and a new story, till then stay safe and take care. This is your Chandamama signing off.